Good morning and welcome to another episode of The Angry Astronaut. This is an unexpected and very short episode and unsurprisingly I'm really really pissed. Not necessarily about what's going on but the fact that I just completed a video that's doing very well, over 2,000 views in one day. Thank you so much for watching what I do, I appreciate it. But some news came out that absolutely required my attention, so I had to throw this together at the last moment. And frankly, I hate doing that sort of thing. But to make it really brief, the Artemis program from NASA to return humans to the moon, that program requires landers, and there was a bidding process that went on, and contracts were awarded for the lander project. And one of the winners of that particular bidding process was SpaceX. However, what a lot of folks don't necessarily realize is SpaceX hasn't actually won the final process. This is still very competitive, and frankly, it's not a fair competition at all. The other competitors for this particular project are being given a lot more consideration, and frankly, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for SpaceX if they were to lose this thing, and I'm going to explain why right now. So in their quest to return to the moon, NASA had to select a private company to provide a lander for their astronauts to use once they arrive in lunar orbit. And they chose SpaceX as one of the competitors, awarding $135 million to the Starship. Now, although I'm delighted about this, this proposal converts the Starship from a spaceship into a base of operations, removing the fins, removing the heat tiles, basically everything that makes it a Starship, and turns it into an immobile base on the moon, not what it was intended for in the first place. And although the Starship could carry out the entire mission to the moon on its own, instead it's designed to dock with the Orion spacecraft delivered by the wasteful SLS. So instead of being used as an efficient, reusable mode of transportation to the Moon, Mars, and many other locations in the solar system, NASA has chosen to use it as a base for a non-reusable, extremely expensive, and wasteful spacecraft. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. But another thing that doesn't make sense to me is the fact that Dynetics, in conjunction with the Sierra Nevada company, is receiving $253 million for their lander called the Alpaca. Now, very little information has been released about the alpaca, aside from the fact that it's reusable, low-slung, giving astronauts easy access to the lunar surface, and that it's completely compatible with the lunar gateway. Other than that, we don't know a lot, aside from the fact that it got $253 million. Then finally, $579 million went to the national team, led by Blue Origin and including Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, and Draper, all NASA favorites. So we've got three possibilities here, but some of them have definite advantages. Not only does the national team get 60% of the money, but they also have the easiest job. 
Blue Origin just uses their Blue Moon Lunar Lander that they've already been developing. Lockheed Martin builds a crew-rated ascent stage, which is similar to what it used for the Orion spacecraft. And Northrop Grumman builds a transfer stage to move the lander from the Lunar Gateway to low lunar orbit based on the Cygnus cargo spacecraft that it's been using for years. Oh yeah, and their system is also compatible with the Lunar Gateway. Doesn't seem like a very fair competition to me. And in case you're wondering why Gateway compatibility is so important, Jim Bridenstine, administrator of NASA, said, quote, We will not have the Gateway in place for the first landing on the surface of the moon. The second time we land humans on the moon, we absolutely want to have the gateway in the mix because we need to land on the moon by 2024 and we need to have a sustainable presence by 2028. And Doug Lavero of NASA further added that for these initial contracts, given what the contractors proposed, both Blue Origin and Dynetics proposed solutions that could use Gateway or could go directly to Orion. SpaceX proposed a solution for this base period that they're working on that would just go to Orion. And in case you think that NASA might be willing to dump the Gateway and just use the Starship as their lunar base, well, I have a video linked in the description that explains why NASA definitely wouldn't do that. But let's say that SpaceX gets past that. And in that case, what would they have to do in order to win this contract? Well, first, obviously, they would have to build a human-rated starship because even though it would be unmanned initially, it would be expected to take care of astronauts later on, so you'd have to have life support. Not a small task given the fact that we haven't even done a static fire of the starship at the time of this video. But then, what would be needed after that? Well, we'd need the BFR, of course, and we haven't even seen a prototype of that. And then you would have to be able to prove that you could do an orbital refueling of the Starship, because that's the only way to get the Starship to the moon. So you would also have to build a tanker Starship on top of that. That's quite a checklist of items to have to complete. But even if SpaceX managed to pull all of this off, would Elon Musk really want NASA and all their red tape involved in the development of the Starship? Would it really be worth it? And to make matters worse, Blue Origin is going to be the prime contractor of this deal, handling program management, systems engineering, safety, and mission assurance. Would this apply to Starship development? Would we even want to take the risk? Now this process has only just begun. There's a lot we don't know. And as a matter of fact, my opinion could change in a few weeks. Who knows? But the fact of the matter is, I do not believe that the Starship, as important of a project as it is, should become subject to NASA red tape or anything resembling step-by-step -step ferociously, for those of you familiar with Blue Origin. I think that Elon Musk should take the money he's been awarded for this and run with it. Develop the Starship on his own without any restrictions from third parties. Just my opinion, and we'll see how things develop. But until this process is over in about 10 months, Stay angry about space.